Hey everybody. As many of you know, this is my 125. It's my African themed tank. And tonight I want to just take a few minutes and focus on my Tenopoma Acuterostra here that we see in the front of the tank. These go by many common names. Uh, I've heard them called leopard garamis, uh, climbing perch. They are most frequently sold, and I bought mine under the name uh, African Spotted Leaf Fish, and they sell them at one of the big chain pet stores here in America uh, for about $8 or something. They're not very expensive. And when I bought him, I'm not kidding, the fish was not as long as this guy is thick at this point. Uh, the fish was probably about an inch long when I got him. And this guy now is about an inch and a half thick. He's a really, really big fish, uh, at least by my standards. Of course, that snakeskin garami right there is larger. Um, but I was not expecting this at all when I bought it. I had him in a 40-gallon tank, and I thought that would be fine. And I suppose if you kept it by itself and had like a species type tank and had maybe one or two other small fish in there or some bottom dwellers or something it could be okay in a 40 gallon tank i like to have my fish be able to have room to roam if they want and this fish is definitely one uh, that's got a little more intelligence about it and i wouldn't feel right keeping it cooped up in a little tiny tank like that uh, i've got a molly in a 10 gallon tank upstairs and while it is in there by itself I don't have any issues with a Molly being in a 10 gallon tank. It's not cooped up. They just kind of sit there and don't really do their thing. You know, they just kind of hang out and do nothing. This guy is curious. He's intelligent. He looks around. He watches me. He follows me around the room. He interacts with the other animals in the tank. Uh, definitely not the kind of fish that, again, I would feel comfortable with just leaving in a very small tank where it didn't have a lot of room to explore uh, its habitat. So, keeping that in mind, if you do think about wanting to get one of these fish, they're great fish. He's really cool. He's probably my favorite, or he's certainly uh, on my short list of favorites. I do have quite a lot of fish, and a lot of them are pretty cool fish. Um, I wouldn't put him in a tank with anything smaller than these Congo Tetras, and even some of the smaller Tetras he goes after occasionally. I have significantly less otocinclus in here than I used to, and while I've only ever seen him take a swipe at an odo one time, he spit it right back out, and I've seen odos swim directly in front of his face. I've seen him look right at them and then swim away. Uh, he is a piscivore. They do feed on other fish in the wild, so if he's looking right at an otocinclus and swimming away, I'm not too concerned about him eating them. Uh, on any kind of regularity. If you had something like a smaller, like a platy or something in this tank that wasn't fully grown yet, uh, it would be a snack for this fish. <clears throat> now, when they come smaller, you know, you get them little, that's obviously not an issue, but they grow pretty quickly. I was told that it was a slow growing fish by multiple sources, and within a year, I was already seriously considering what size tank I was going to upgrade from the 40. Now, I had a school of five Congo Tetras in there, and I had several other fish. It was a fairly crowded 40-gallon tank, but it was pretty clear that this guy was getting way too big way too quickly, uh, and that's why we now have everybody over here in a 125, and it works out really well. Uh, I did have that uh, snakeskin garami in the 40, and I also had my uh, Cynodontus eupteris, or my African featherfin squeaker down here, in the same 40. So that was my former African tank, and now that everybody's gotten larger, we've moved over into this 125. And I probably spend, I don't know, half my overall time looking at all my fish together is probably this one. And then the other half of the time is all the others combined. So I really do enjoy them, I really do recommend them, but you do need a larger tank, and you do need to keep in mind that they are... Uh, Piscivores. They're not really aggressive in the sense of, you know, they're, they're just territorial to other fish or anything. They'll just try to eat any fish small enough to fit in their mouth. So keeping that in mind, you know, if you wanted to get one or whatever, then I would say go for it. They're really awesome fish. I'd say maybe a 55 gallon would be about the smallest I would consider uh, for somebody that size. 
And I swear, he's the thickest one I've ever seen. I've seen some pretty big ones on different YouTube channels, but this is the biggest tenopoma I've ever seen. He eats, at this point, predominantly uh, freeze-dried krill is his staple food. I give him that uh, probably twice a day. He doesn't really eat anything else. If I put flakes in there, the other fish eat it, but he ignores it. He only goes after larger stuff. I used to have floating cichlid pellets that he would eat, but when I replaced them, I got the wrong can and I got floating cichlid sticks. And he doesn't, he just looks at the sticks like he doesn't know what they are. He doesn't eat them. Um, if I throw crickets or any kind of insect in that floats on the surface, he tears them up like nobody's business. And again, you know, if you wanted to feed live fish, if you wanted to keep it in a species tank and feed it uh, feeder fish or something like that, uh, that would certainly be uh, very good for him. It would certainly make him happy. Uh, that's what he does in the wild. They are ambush predators. They lay low and they come up from below and strike stuff above them or on the surface. So, again, I wouldn't put it in a tank with smaller surface dwelling fish like guppies or even like something like a killifish or something that wasn't full grown yet uh, would probably be a target for it. So that's about all I can think of. Just wanted to share my experience with that. That's a little... Uh, look at my experience with them again I don't really do species profiles so much I just kind of talk a little bit about uh, my experience keeping them what you know what to expect if you're going to have them how they interact with other fish that sort of thing so thanks for watching make sure you subscribe you never really know what you're going to get I do a lot of spur of the moment stuff and uh, I like to think all of it's worth looking at so if you're subscribed you won't miss any of it so thanks for watching this one I hope you enjoyed it I'll see you real soon in the next one